I, think, I hate to be this negative. But are we feeding the sheep today or are we amusing the goats? I, I, I like that statement. I don't know where I got it. It's not original, I'm sure. But are we busy feeding the sheep of God or are we getting involved with amusing the goats? I think we need to be very, very much concerned this morning about what we teach, what we preach. I think most of you know that I am a very, very strong person when it comes to preaching the gospel. And I preach the gospel for I feel that is my responsibility. I like what Paul wrote to Timothy. As Paul was facing the end of his life and he wrote to Timothy a letter of encouragement. In 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, the third verse, which by the way, if, uh, I don't know whether it's uh, going to be seen on, shown on the screen or not. I'm going to give it to me time to bring it up. But it says, for the time shall come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. I know one of the more famous and more watched television evangelist, one that I don't like to listen to, by the way, but I saw him on Larry King in an interview. And he made the statement, even though he has thousands attend his church, and there are thousands, probably hundreds of thousands, that listen to him faithfully on television. He made the statement that says, doctrine is a thing of the past. I want to show people how to live a good life. Doctrine is a thing of the past. With this in mind, I would like to explore some scriptures that deal with our teaching the gospel. If you have your Bibles or follow the screen, if it's up on the screen. Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 19 and 20, as Jesus began to ascend into heaven. Go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Meaning the end of this age, this time. Notice that in this great commission, that Jesus used teach, baptize, and teach. Teach, baptize, and teach. Some of your other translations will tell you to make disciples. Well, make disciples where you teach them. Baptism, as far as I'm concerned, is extremely, extremely important. And we teach afterwards. Again, in 2 Timothy 4th chapter, verses 1 and 2, right before the one I quoted just a while ago, it says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Teach the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. <clears throat> and doctrine. And notice that word doctrine added onto that. It was a long time before I realized what Paul was talking about. He said, preach the word when in season and out of season. What did Paul mean? When preach the word when the time is right. And even when it is wrong, at that time, preach the word. Several years ago, I preached a, to a congregation. No longer exists, and I can understand why. But after I was there for a short period of time, I found out that some of the leaders of the church were involved in wife swapping. 
believe it or not. I went to some of the other leaders and said, what are we going to do about him? They said, nothing. We already know about him. And I said, well, what do you want me to do about him? Nothing. There are our sons and our daughters, so you're not going to say anything about it. The season wasn't right for me to preach on Christian morality, but I did. After about three months of my preaching, why don't they ask me to leave? And I don't blame them. In the church, because of the idea of Christian morality, soon faded out of existence. And rightfully so. Brethren, even when it's going to be harmful to you, you preach Christ, the gospel of Christ, the word of God. For it's our responsibility to teach and feed the sheep. Going on with some of the other scriptures, there, there is as a warning. Now Mark the seventh chapter, verses six through nine, he answered this to them, Well have Isaiah said, uh, prophesied of you hypocrites. I'm not calling you hypocrites, I'm reading the scripture. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments of man. For they inside the commandment of God, you hold, hold the tradition of man as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things you do. And he saying to them, full well you reject the commandment of God, that you might keep your own traditions. I think the church is lost in tradition. I think we have added so much tradition to the church. One, one Sunday when I was preaching down in Tennessee, I got the broad idea of building an entire service around the partaking of the Lord's Supper. I worked hard on it. Uh, uh, it was, in my opinion, and I, I, I guess it was self-glory, I guess that's what you might say, but I thought it was one of the greatest services that we had while I was there. I had people that <clears throat> down in tears as they thought about Jesus dying for them as a result of what we did. That I had one leader of the church that became so vocal about the situation that he destroyed the entire atmosphere. And the reason for it, I forgot to put the doxology in the service. So simple. I went to him in that time when he was broadcasting. I knew what was going on. I found out what was going on. I walked over to him and I sang the doxology to him personally. <laughs> but it was, uh, I think oftentimes we get so lost in tradition. So lost in what we've done in the past. That we're not open to new ideas that present the gospel and the word of God. Paul wrote to the Galatians. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that call, called you out of the, from under the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, that that which we preach and preach unto you, let him be accursed. As you said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel, unto you than we have received that can be accursed. I think our responsibility is to let go of the doctrines of man and to follow the teachings of God. There is a warning over and over and over again in the scriptures about false teachers. Jesus said in Matthew the 7th chapter verses 13 through 15, enter ye in the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving in wolves. Wow. The words of Jesus warning us 
And again, uh, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 11, chapter, verses 13 through 15, For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into, into the apostles of Christ, and no model. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing for his, if his ministers also trans be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I think we need to be careful. John writes in the third, fourth chapter of 1 John, and I just happened to think of this passage in Scripture. Try the spirits. See if they are of God. Make sure their interpretation of the scripture is according to what the apostles originally meant. Now the last one, last scripture I want to use. Matthew the 18th chapter, verses 5 through 6. And whoso shall, excuse me, and whoso shall receive one of such little child in my name receiveth me. For whoso shall offend one of these little ones, which will even be, it be, were better for him than a millstone were hung about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. What is our responsibility? Our responsibility is to make sure that what we teach is God's word, what we preach is God's word, and what we believe is the word of God. We need to continue to feed God's sheep. I have never learned all there is to know about the Bible. I have put years, 75 years, I must change that down to 70 years, into the study of God's Word. One time I knew the original language, I don't know whether I can anymore. And I'm going to confess to you that I don't know everything about God's Word. I still need to be fed the truth of the Scripture. And so do you. May it be that we will dedicate ourselves. That we will commit ourselves to the study of the Word of God that we might be the best Christian possible. And then we might give ourselves over to the glory of Christ. Do we find that commitment? Do we find that dedication? I do in this congregation. I, I, I appreciate the remarks that are made to me, whether you agree or disagree with me. I appreciate the remarks. Because it tells me that you're trying to learn God's May the future be that we will feed all the sheep of God with His Word. We're going to be singing our song of invitation. Hymn number whatever, softly and tenderly. We'll sing one verse only. Shall we stand as we sing? If anyone needs to make a decision for Christ, to believe, to repent, to confess, and to be baptized, we invite you to come as we stand and sing.